Let's watch how Kurgazox cooks propaganda for billionaires. November 2016, Kurgazox published a video on the most gruesome parasites. It tells a story of devastating diseases that the world governments couldn't solve, so the big pharma stepped in to be the hero of humanity and save the day. It's one of those too good to be true stories, so I decided to look it up myself. And the real events are nowhere near as glaring for the big pharma as Kurgazox presents. Pharmaceutical corporations did donate their medicine to the most affected regions, but they didn't do it out of their own volition or initiative. They did it after decades of neglecting the diseases because they weren't profitable enough to manufacture fixes for them. Bill Gates is actually responsible for much of the neglect. His charitable priorities overemphasized big-name diseases such as malaria, HIV, or tuberculosis. But in the process of doing so, they drew crucial attention and resources away from more common and structural problems, many of which led to outbreaks of other diseases. After the public pressure was too large to ignore, the drug makers decided to join the plan. Big Pharma never came up with this initiative. It was the World Health Organization who had proposed a roadmap to eradicate the diseases by 2020 and convinced governments and NGOs to join them. The pharmaceutical conglomerates never assumed any risk. These corporations took home almost $9 trillion in profits in 18 years. So this little stunt is really just a pocket change for them. This video was paid for by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and it so happens that the Gates are heavily invested in many of the pharma companies Kurtzazar portrays as heroes. They own major holdings in many of the participating companies, and both Bill and Melinda Gates are trustees of two pharma firms. This video isn't positive news, it's a positive PR. Kurtzazar admitted they wouldn't have made this video if it wasn't paid for by Gates. Okay, what the hell just happened? Before we continue with this, I have to repeat something that I say all the time. You're probably familiar with this, but all this matter of video. media is oftentimes done at the behest of billionaires because billionaires sit at the tippy top of a system that created them, a system that is supposed to, that a system that is designed for that level of wealth accumulation, okay? And that's what the media does. The media normalizes the oppression and struggles that you face, make it seem like it's actually normal, make it seem like there's no other type of system, no other type of economic organization of society that could ever be better, okay? It is there to keep you sedated. Now, in the process, do they actually fucking tell you the truth about the news? Of course, of course. But you always have to have that underlying understanding that uh, the media's ultimate goal is always to normalize capitalism. The media's ultimate goal is to always uh, manufacture consent, okay? That's it. Kurgazox is uh, only unique in the sense that it is a YouTube channel, which is part of the reason why you wouldn't expect it to have uh, biases like that. But of course, those biases could also uh, uh, those biases could also form as a consequence of growing up and being educated under the the banner of neoliberal capitalist democracy being the best uh, form of governance. Okay. Oftentimes, it's a bit of both. ...is the perfect culmination of everything that's wrong with billionaires funding media to get the coverage they need. It provides a whitewashed take on real events, it undeservedly elevates the role of private entities, and gives a marketing boost to their agenda and financial interests. The ultra-wealthy are pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into media companies, academic institutions, and governing bodies to rig every step of policymaking in their favor. When billionaires want to open up the markets for their trade, they'll fund media outlets that tell the audience how important investments, innovations, and economic growth are. They'll donate to research that will give them the argument that whatever they decide to do is science. They'll give to political campaigns to get the right candidates elected so that the laws they lobby for are easier to pass. We have identified this to be a problem with all big institutions, and this is what it did to our trust in them. So if it is a problem when billionaires fund our politicians, our journalists, and our academia, is it also a problem when they fund our YouTubers? 
because billionaire funding is a lot more prevalent on YouTube than you might think. It's far beyond the scope of this one six-year-old video. I didn't realize I was watching a video sponsored by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation because Kurtzizek didn't reveal this information until the last 20 seconds of the video. I actually first found out about the sponsorship from Kurtzizek's Medium article on how they treat sponsors. Here, Philip Detmer, the owner of the channel, admitted that Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was their biggest supporter. So big, in fact, it helped transform Kurtzizek into a powerhouse. But Philip Detmer also told us that Curses Act is almost entirely viewer-funded. I wanted to know where the truth lies, so I went to the Foundation's grant database and found this. In November 2015, Curses Act was awarded $570,000 from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for a 49-month-long contract. I wanted to see the full extent of this contract, so I started going through their YouTube videos to see how many were made for the Foundation and that's when I entered a rabbit hole. I was able to identify at least eight videos Curses Act made for the Gates Foundation. When they were awarded the Gates Grant, the Patreon was relatively small, yielding less than $9,000 per month. The money from Gates would cover at least $11,000 per month, or $71,250 per video. So the Gates money alone would be at least on par with their Patreon, but Gates wasn't alone. Throughout my research, I kept discovering more and more billionaire-sponsored videos. It's not just one foundation. It's George Soros, The Templetons, and Facebook co-founder Dustin Moskowitz. They also made a sponsored video for this professor from Oxford University, William McCaskill, who is funded by Open Philanthropy. And Curses Ad also received money from Bill Gates' personal blog and venture capitalist funds. From what I was able to find, Curtis Ad made at least one video for Open Society Foundations, at least three videos for Templeton World Charity, three videos for Bill Gates' blog and Breakthrough Energy, and one video for William McCaskill. We know they were awarded half a million from the Gates Foundation and almost six million from Open Philanthropy. If they kept the same per video rate since the Gates grant, it could be estimated Curtis Ad received at least seven million from billionaire funds. This would be more money than Curtis Ad received from their supporters on Patreon in the entire history of the channel. This made me realize that Curtis Act never was this small, independent, almost entirely viewer-funded channel. As soon as the studio incorporated, billionaires began lining up. They transformed the small Munich-based design studio with five employees into a multi-million dollar media powerhouse with dozens of- Why does it matter? Shouldn't a critique be on the content of the video so they got paid for them? Doesn't seem relevant without a criticism of the video content, right? Yes, no shit. I'm sure this 24-minute video is probably going to address that as well. Here's the thing. I don't know the background of the hated one. I don't know if they're right wing. Uh, I know Charlie watched this. Okay. Um, ultimately, though, you know, this is no different than fucking Fox News. You know what I mean? And, and the same thing goes for George Soros as well. Like, these guys have the exact same interest... They, they have class solidarity. There is no, like, uh, like billionaires don't have politics beyond class politics. There is no left-right. They might have, like, pet projects or whatever. But ultimately, they have one interest, which is to sedate the masses into thinking that the current order is good, okay? The current way that you exist is good. Ultimately, you, uh, otherwise, you will realize that there's a lot more of you than there are of them. Like, a lot. A lot more. They might not... Kurzgesagt? Kur Kurzgesagt. Might not make a video straight up saying that, like, uh, socialism is awful. But they'll make a video about climate change. And then the end note will be, we got to vote. We got to vote for, uh, you know, we got to vote for our leaders and vote our way out of this problem. That's just neoliberal uh, capitalist propaganda regardless. Or talk about how, um, you know, uh, uh, 
some kind of carbon reduction policy in the form of cap and trade is actually one of the best policies that you can utilize when it's demonstrably ineffective. They might not even go as far as vote and even say we should just wait for new innovation to pick up the slack. Eventually it will. So they might actually, they might actually uh, identify issues correctly. Okay? They might actually identify issues correctly, but their solutions will be bullshit. It's a less nefarious or, I guess, more innocuous way of framing issues in a particular way from YouTube. That's also the reason why a YouTube channel will oftentimes... A YouTube channel will oftentimes, uh, you know, get significantly less funding than uh, major uh, TV networks. Major TV networks are just straight up owned by wealthy uh, oligopoly uh, beneficiaries. I don't see how voting for different legislators that care about climate change is an issue. It's not. But the takeaway still has the exact same sedative because it's not correctly identifying uh, the issue uh, with respect to the profit motive. Employees. Kurtz's act was also sponsored by regular commercial businesses such as Brilliant or Skillshare, but neither of these has multi-billion dollar investments in global industries and they aren't spending millions in political lobbies trying to influence lawmaking. And most importantly, they don't fund the sources that Kurtz's act uses for the research. And what the hell is going on with Kurtz's act research? Kurtzak told us their research is impartial and fact-checked by scientists to ensure integrity. But my skepticism alarms were already buzzing out of their asses, so I started looking at their sources and noticed something odd. Many of their videos rely primarily on a single publication. This publication is a partner of the channel and they help them with research and provide numbers for their scripts. This publication appears so frequently in their sources, their website is quoted up to dozens of times in a single document. This research publication is not some independent group of scientists just sharing their hard science for free. It is our role in data, heavily funded by Bill Gates and other billionaires, many of which have also sponsored Kirk's Act videos. The publication oh god, I already saw something that I fucking despise. Have also the Center for Effective Altruism, Effective Altruism Meta Fund. Ah... Uh. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Um, I mean, I utilize our world and data too. Not saying that the shit on there is fake, but like, effective altruism is. Effective altruism is, is Sam Bankman Freed, for those of you who don't know, uh, is, is what all these fucking Silicon Valley geeks and freaks believe. Uh, it's just a way to justify their level of wealth accumulation by saying oh no i know better it's like a it's the age-old conservative rhetoric around small government eviscerating government so that uh and and starving the government bankrupting it so that like it's just philanthropy that actually patches the the patchwork of solutions necessary for survival why because i know better i'm rich Trust me, I got rich because I'm smart, because I deserve it, because this is a meritocratic process. So obviously, I know better on how to spend money than the government does, because the government is bloated. Okay? Isn't that the core of neoliberalism? Yes, it is. You are far away from smart man. Brother, I think you genuinely misunderstood what I was saying. I'm not saying I am rich, that's why I know better. I'm saying this is what effective altruism is and people who believe in it.
Do you think it'd be unethical to watch the content knowing this? What? No. No. I mean, unethical to watch content. Like, what ethics are around watching content? You can watch things you disagree with. You can watch things you agree with. You don't have to 100% agree with things that you watch. There is no left or right to watching content. There is no ethics to content consumption. That's just like liberal brain rot. We watch a shitload of right-wing content on here, like every day, all day. That was the other side of why I was so upset about people being like, dude, you cannot even review Hogwarts Legacy. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Okay. Good one. There you go. Immediately said child pornography. Just eviscerate that guy. Just laser his brain uh that dude needs a lobotomy straight up heard kirk's act videos fbi the right there this guy right there 4.8 million dollars from the gates foundation alone but they were also funded by open philanthropy templeton and william mccaskill all of these entities had their series of sponsored videos at their kirk's act channel their partnership with our world in data was initiated by the grant from the gates foundation through the first video on overpopulation made in collaboration with max roser the founder and lead scientist of our world in data Following this money trail led me to discover that the data in Curtis Act videos isn't such a rock-solid science as they authoritatively present in their videos. Many of the numbers from our world in data Curtis Act relies on so much are complete garbage. In the videos on overpopulation, they show this amazing decline in global poverty, a trend which they attribute to economic growth. But where is this data coming from? It's from Max Roser's graph at Our World in Data. But look at how the data points go all the way back to the early 19th century. None of these historical numbers are proven. Real data on poverty for the majority of the world didn't exist until 1981. Anything before that is a speculation. And who defines extreme poverty? The World Bank does. How? Oh. By calculating oh, yeah. the lowest possible rate as an average from poverty lines of the poorest countries in the world. Oh yeah. That's living below $1.90 a day. Scholars strongly disagree with this rate. And oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. fucking lutely yes. Oh, this video is cooking, dude. Holy shit, I'm glad Charlie and... I'm glad Moist Critical and XUC watches video. Okay, this is 100% yes. This is a very good video. Just at least $7.40 a day. With the World Bank's rate, billions of people that are extremely poor... Two things have contributed to the number one thing that neoliberals love pointing to uh, when the, whenever they fucking say capitalism has eviscerated extreme poverty. Number one is China. Okay, China, number one. Number two is this. Is the little game they play with what they consider to be extreme poverty. Just, you know, change the numbers up a little bit and all of a sudden, poof. Global poverty has been eradicated. Exactly. I always disagree with mostly anything in that video. Oh, okay. well, I didn't realize that he disagreed with everything in the video, but whatever. According to their national, I hope some of his fans uh, took a better regions, which is what makes the a more understanding like approach this, to this. Instead of this, if we use the seven dollar forty line, or this, if we leave out China, so not a dramatic decline at all, but an increase actually, or a stagnation at best since 1981. There's also half of the world's population suffering from hunger, food insecurity, and malnutrition. More than 40 million modern slaves, and the ever-widening income gap between the richest and the poor. So really this, what you're seeing here, by the way, the global north versus the global south, income, USD per capita, that gap widening all the fucking time is also identical to the very same gap widening between those who have and those who do not have in the United States of America, even in the global north, when you look at income and wealth disparity, it, that gap is nearly identical. That the, the numbers are a little different, obviously, but that's just how it fucking works. Because one cannot exist without the other.
Where was the that last guy you you clapped? Uh, I want to know what he what he had to say. It seemed like he was cooking. Really hard to come to an optimistic. It trickles down though. <laughs> yeah, like my cummies trickled down to your mom, dude. What the fuck do you mean it trickles down? What has trickled down? Are you a feminist hater or a blind man protector? There's no middle ground. You either are or aware of your life or you're a men excuser and don't come at me with men make them too. When you know who the problem is? Oh, okay. I'm glad you banned this person. They're just fucking insane. My man said trickle down exists. Where has it existed? Trickle down is just a justification of false and disproven, consistently disproven justification for neoliberal economics. We, we already know that it doesn't exist. That's crazy. We're living in 2023, Chatter. This isn't like 1987. What the fuck are you talking about? What, what do you mean? <sighs> I was joking. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Conclusion that poverty is somehow on the decline. But it is a conclusion touted by Bill Gates, who also paid for this video to be made. As the economist Max Roser has said, the world has done quite well on this. The newspapers could have run a headline. The lives of the poor will improve more in the next 15 years than at any other time in history. The lives of the global south and people living in the global north as well will be improved marginally as a consequence of technological achievements. This does not mean that they are being improved evenly. And this does not mean that their lives are being improved overall. Okay? Just because someone now has the, like your hand-me-down shit, okay? And they're following the technological improvements 15 years <coughs> in the past does not change the reality that their, 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 their relative wealth in relation to your relative wealth is... is <coughs> Devastatingly unequal. Number of people in poverty fell by 137,000 since yesterday. Comes out as a, what for many people will be a stunningly positive story. Many videos made in partnership with our world in data can be dissected like this. Look at the numbers on historical emissions from the video on who is responsible for climate change. Where are these numbers coming from? Our role in data, of course, but that's just one source that conveniently downplays the role of the developed countries in climate change. According to a paper from Lancet, funded by no one, the US is responsible not for 25% of emissions, but 40%. Yeah. The EU is responsible for 29% instead of 22. G8 emitted 85% of historical CO2, and the global north is accountable for 92% of excess carbon in the atmosphere. These numbers draw a much less equitable share of responsibility than Curtis's at. As I was analyzing more and more videos, I actually discovered a plot I did not expect to find. In a couple of separate videos on climate change, Chris Isaac briefly mentions seemingly random selection of innovations. Or a new generation of nuclear power plants to new batteries, electronics and steel, low carbon production of cement, artificial meat, carbon capture, carbon capture, direct air capture, and carbon capture. This study came out after Kurgazog's video, to be fair. Oh, the Lancet one that he used? Okay. Capture. There um, regardless though, I think that that disparity, I'm sure there's plenty of fucking studies, uh, that show that the, the disparity in which like the first world utilizes energy consumption and, and has, uh, a tremendous amount of, uh, a, a tremendous amount of carbon footprint in comparison relative to all the other developing nations is, is like, there were plenty of studies before then. I remember watching this shit. No, I remember watching that video and, and if I, if I recall correctly, I'm pretty sure I criticized it. Did I not? I was never this skeptical of the uh, of uh, the the uh, videos that they produce, and I love the ones that they do about aliens, especially. But those aren't really funded by uh, Bill Gates and whatnot. But I do remember at the time when I was watching it as a Kurz enjoyer, uh, I I had some issues with the way that they uh, covered climate change. No, their alien videos, like the Fermi Paradox and shit like that, is actually very good. Maybe because I agree with it, but also because, like, it's just, like, basic concepts. You know what I mean? Unless it's funded by Mark Zuckerberg, who is definitely an alien, and trying to make us seem like aliens are not already here. <laughs> I 
Oh, God. There doesn't seem to be any objective merit as to why I mention these in particular, but they do have in common two things. Bill Gates has invested millions into startups developing low-carbon cement, steel, batteries, alternative meat, nuclear energy, and carbon capture. And none of these technologies have proven to be commercially viable or scalable enough to make them count. The innovations lack robust scientific backing, and experts do not agree relying on them is a valid strategy. Many videos on topics that align with the interest- By the way, this is another fundamental component of effective altruism is like, uh, kick the can down the line, let you just consume, 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 and let the future sort it out. This is where effective altruists actually basically create a symbiotic relationship with just out and about right-wingers. Jordan Peterson, who is funded by the oil and gas industry, literally 100%, by the way, this is like verifiably true. Demonstrably true if you listen to what he has to say about like the logging industry or whatever the fuck about renewable energy, but like also 100% funded by oil and gas uh, billionaires who literally repeat their propaganda regularly. He always says the same exact thing that you hear from effective altruists, which is, um, which is that uh, in the future we just we need to keep developing, we need to keep developing, and then eventually. Uh, you know, in the future, we'll find a solution for uh, our carbon footprint. Jordan Peterson and uh, a lot of these, like, supposedly liberal, neoliberal billionaires, uh, of course, uh, disagree. Jordan Peterson also claims that climate change is, like, not all that big of a deal. These guys say climate change is a big deal, but we will find a solution through technology, through technological improvements. Now, do I believe that we could? Yes, I do. But if you ask the scientists, the actual people who have spent their entire lives uh, researching anthropogenic climate change and its devastating impact on, on humanity, they don't believe that we have enough time to, to make this gamble. And instead, we should start taking preventative measures. Okay? <sighs> So that's the point. Anything that moves away from like uh, genuine, uh, genuine preventative measures, and I'm not talking about fucking cap and trade. I'm not talking about like uh, carbon, uh, you know, uh, uh, the the carbon credit uh, schemes that the American government utilizes. I'm talking straight up hyper focusing on renewable energy and slowly but surely moving away from uh, fossil fuels. Thought you would like to know this. Second lab-grown chicken product cleared for human consumption by U.S. regulator. Uh, if it, I fucking doubt that it tastes good. But if it does, I'm excited. Of Curtis Act billionaire sponsors are frequently sprinkled with messaging about how investments and innovations will solve a problem or make the world a better place. By investing in these things right now, investment and aid and fair investment. Is investment in massive investment as investment pours in? It's obnoxious how often this happens. We invest in innovation that lead to innovation, the nature of innovation. And innovation, but innovation, the more time we give innovation and innovations like artificial meat. The standards for quality of such data is profoundly lowered in order to make these hidden injections work. In the instance of carbon capture, Curtis Act pulled the numbers on costs straight from a Gates-funded magazine who took the number from a Gates-funded private carbon capture facility. But that's the low- And then, yeah, okay. This part is pretty much uh, every fucking facet of media. Newsflash, whenever you read a fucking study, um, it always goes down this exact same- multi-layered uh, scheme that uh, will oftentimes go back to a, a specific like billionaire funded or millionaire corporation funded uh, uh, research facility. Uh, this is something that is done all the fucking time. By the way, sometimes it doesn't even mean that the information or the data is wrong for the record. Okay? Just understand that. I'm not saying that these, uh, this data is wrong. Uh, it is just uh, an unfortunate systemic problem. It is what it is. Now, there are instances where I can tell you it's wrong because I know some of the, the think tanks, for example, that fund this kind of research 
and why they're funding it, right? If I see something from the American Enterprise Institute, I can tell you immediately, oh no, that's bullshit. That's a bullshit study, 100%. So always, you have to always be aware of the biases of what people are telling you, okay? What is the, the, the bias or the, uh, the, the underlying reason as to why this information is in front of you, okay? What are the interests of the think tanks that uh, decided to f uh, facilitate a research like this? Okay, recognize that. Always estimate. In reality, it could be as much as twice as expensive today and still at least twice as expensive as trees are right now than carbon capture is projected to be in the most optimistic estimates, which won't be real until at least the next decade. Rather than solving the climate crisis, many scientists argue such investments divert attention away from more impactful solutions and delay phasing out of modern industrial methods and fossil fuel dependence. Curtis's Act doesn't tell you which technologies Bill Gates is invested in and how positive messaging about them is advancing his positions. But Curtis's Act did take the effort to mention exactly those technologies that Bill Gates and his billionaire friends are most invested in. There is a pattern that can explain why Curtis's Act videos are like this. In many videos that coincide with Bill Gates' interests, they collaborate with our role in data or prioritize their content on these issues. In their video on do we need nuclear energy to stop climate change, Kurt Skazak prominently links to our world in data species on nuclear energy. This video is not sponsored by Gates, but the billionaire is betting heavily on his new generation of nuclear reactors. Kurt Skazak's source document links to our world in data 27 times, or about every third reference. Kurt Skazak made videos heavily criticizing organic food. This is another topic of major investment from Gates, who thinks industrialized agriculture with pesticides and GMOs is the best approach to solving world hunger which it hasn't solved so far. In all four cases... Yeah, I mean, the, the real solution to world hunger is, is abolishing the profit motive. Like, there's, I'm sorry not to come across like I'm teetering on the ed edge of the top of the hour ad break or the edge of socialism, but it's just like, we already produce an abundance of food. It's a logistics problem, okay? Top of the hour ad break, however, not a logistics problem. Very easy solution for you. Subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Or you get gifted a sub. There's no systems at play here. It's just, it's just, it is what it is, okay? You subscribe, you don't see the ad break. You get gifted a sub, you don't see the ad break. Here's the ad break now. You can't say that GMOs don't help when it comes to famine caused by environment or disease. No, 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 I'm not anti-GMO. Rainy draws a lot. Thank you for the 50 gifted subs. No, 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 you're misunderstanding me. I don't have a... We just looked at the fucking lab-grown meat, brother. Like, I, I, I'm I, fucking in favor of all matter of, of uh, technological developments in food production, okay? I'm simply stating that hyper-focusing on exclusively uh, GMOs and shit like that uh, moves the problem away from the real issue. The real issue being logistics, Okay? The real issue is always logistics. Every single issue that we have, every single issue that we have in society right now, homelessness, well, we have more homes than we have homeless people. How's that for, how's that for simple science? Fuck do you mean? We have more homes than we have homeless people. Why are there homeless people? You know, we have... Uh, uh, more people dying of famine in, in, a, in a global economy where we have an abundance of food. We have solved, like I said, technological achievements have solved so many of the problems that existed in like the 17th century, 18th century, 19th century and onwards. And yet for some reason, the very same issues still persist in current present society. Why? Because someone has to make money. Okay? That's it. It was not a capitalism problem. It's just a logistics problem, Cap. Exactly. <laughs> I 
Wait, we have more empty homes than we have uh, homeless people? Yes. Cases where Chris Zhang draws verdict on like a lot more. Food. Our world in data is cited as reference. This video is also not sponsored by Gates. The most generous billionaire is one of the earliest backers of alternative meats, owning major positions in vegan and meat-free protein companies. Curtis Act has made a series of videos on meat, all with a strong verdict on how meat is bad for you and the environment. All of these videos were advised on by Hannah Ritchie, one of the key lieutenants at our world in data. During the production of at least one video, Richie was a business manager at a meat-free microprotein company. Whatever your take on meat is, these are conflicts of interest that should normally be disclosed by any serious research. But Curtis Act makes no effort to help you connect the dots. Curtis Act is terrible at disclosing their sponsors. I did a poll of my audience to see when they think channels should disclaim sponsorship. Most people would prefer before the video starts or during intro. Curtis Act never reveals their sponsors until the very end of their videos. Some sponsors were declared in the last few seconds of the video, some were only mentioned in the text on screen, and in at least one instance, the only disclaimer of sponsorship was in the description. This is a low bar even for YouTube. Plenty of good educational creators disclose their sponsors up front. Why should Chris's ad be given a pass? Most people who... Okay, okay, this guy might be a, a bit of a... At the very least, a sock them, because I saw plenty of good channels and immediately Some I saw not just bikes. Some declared in the last few seconds of the video. Some were only mentioned in the text on screen. And in at least one instance, the only disclaimer of sponsorship was in the description. Did he put this second thought in there? This is a bar even for YouTube. Plenty of good educational... Oh yeah, he put second thought in there? Okay, never mind. This guy, this channel in and of itself is... Creators disclose their sponsors up front. Nah, this is nitpicking? No, I think that... What? No, I don't think that's nitpicking at all. Wait, what do you mean? Okay, there is a proper uh, decorum uh, or, or, or proper guideline uh, that mainstream media has when disclosing their sponsorships. NPR, for example, will always mention it. They always put it somewhere that is, like, very noticeable. Always. If they have a conflict of interest, if they have, like, Facebook, for example, he means I'm nitpicking? No, I'm nitpicking in a positive way. I'm saying that this guy's, like, leaving little clues that he might be a bit of a leftist. I still don't know how meat consumption or whatever still contributes to global warming. Meat consumption absolutely contributes to global warming because uh, we raise cattle specifically with the purpose of, like, killing the cattle and eating the cattle, and uh, they fart a lot. What? How? It's like pretty basic stuff. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, they, destroy, uh, uh, they destroy ecosystems. They fart a lot. They ruin fucking natural water supply. There's a, there's a litany of, of issues uh, that come from, from uh, agricultural production. Why should Chris's ad be given a pass? Most people who do not watch videos till the very last second or who cannot read everything that's on the screen would never be aware of the extent to which Chris's ad videos are sponsored by billionaires. Chris's ad also does a terrible job at explaining who their sponsors actually are. This video is part of a series about climate change supported by Breakthrough Energy. In their climate change video sponsored by Breakthrough Energy, you're told it is just a coalition founded by Bill Gates that's working to expand clean energy investment and support the innovations that will lead the world to net zero carbon emissions. But they don't tell you that Breakthrough Energy is a bunch of venture capitalist funds where billionaires stand to make huge profits from adoption of technologies they invest their billions into. Kurtz Gesagt left a link in the description that leads this video is doing a wonderful job of basically saying that the main problem is capitalism without saying the main problem is capitalism, but basically instilling that skepticism in venture capital instead of saying capitalism. Because a lot of you who do still, no matter what happens, uh, love capitalism will look at this and go, well, who cares if it's like VC backed? It's ultimately doing a good thing. Not realizing that like venture capitalists in general do not care about the saving of the environment. They care about the profit motive. That's it.
Therefore, it's understandable that uh, they are not really in the game to uh, immediately, immediately stop, uh, or at least as manageably as possible, uh, roll back some of the most devastating impacts of anthropogenic climate change. Anthrop anthropogenic contributions to climate change. ...to Gates' book sale, but not the fund's official website. YouTube has a policy that flags channels funded by governments with a label that informs viewers of this financial conflict. This was enacted with the aim of combating government misinformation on the platform. You can see this on Curses Act German channel that is backed by the government, and YouTube labels it as a German PBS. This same standard should be applied to private funding too. There should be a label that cannot be arbitrarily set or removed by the creator that this closes a front who is funding their videos. Media consolidation is a major threat to diversity of views and billionaires, including the ones funding Kurzizak, are the main driver behind this trend. It is not enough to promise editorial independence because there are multiple ways sponsors can influence content behind the scenes. Kurzgesagt maintains their sponsors never have input on their scripts, but in practice, they routinely consult with researchers that back. come from sponsor-funded institutions or scientists directly on their sponsor's payroll. The two videos Kurzgesagt made with Max Roser were sponsored by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But Max Roser's Our World in Data received almost $5 million from Bill Gates, so what is exactly the degree of separation here? In the video on vaccine side effects, Kurtzak lists six experts they consulted with, at least four of which are from Gates-funded institutions, and one scientist is an executive at the Gates Foundation. How is that not a sponsor commenting on their script? In three videos Kurtzak made for the Templeton World Charity, at least four out of six scientists have received direct funding for the research from Templeton. In the Kurtzak video on long-termism, The Last Human, sponsored by Open Philanthropy, two out of three scientists are from the Oxford's Future of Humanity Institute, the institute which received at least 15 million pounds from open philanthropy. The one the LMU Munich scientist was also at Oxford during the open philanthropy grants. There is no disclaimer of any of these associations anywhere in Kurtzkazag materials. Another long-termist video, the one on the civilizational collapse, was sponsored and researched by William McCaskill. Seemingly a random professor from Oxford University, McCaskill is behind the Center of Effective Altruism and a number of other charities that have received funding from open philanthropy and some have funded our world in data. Nothing about this relationship is ever disclosed in Curtis at source. What is that video? I don't think I've ever actually watched that. Uh, have I? Wait. And a number of other charities that have received. Was there ever communism before Marx in all of history? Ha ha. Interesting question, my friend. Yes, it's called primitive accumulation, primitive communism. But that's besides the point. Uh, but uh, you should read Marx. He talks about it. Uh, so funding from open philanthropy and some have funded our world in data. Nothing about this relationship. Is civilization on the brink of collapse? Did I watch this? I don't think I watched this. It's ever disclosed in Kurtzizat source materials. Open Philanthropy has given Kurtzizat more than 5 million euros to expand the channel into foreign languages and to promote long-termist philosophy and effective altruism in their videos. Do you think money doesn't buy influence? So billionaires do political lobbying and campaign financing for the lols. And yeah, they no, they do it out of the kindness of their heart. Shut up, dude. You don't understand. Duh. They do it because they're magnanimous. Of course, and this is something I told Charlie Kirk all the way back in like, 2018 or maybe it was 2016 i can't remember one of the times that i debated him on stage at politicon if billionaires were so magnanimous perhaps they would give a fairer distribution of profits that they steal from their workers back to the workers if billionaires were so magnanimous they would perhaps give more back to the federal government by Paying an adequate amount of taxes. But they're not. They're not. You don't get any laws influenced in their favor. Do billionaires buy newspapers and donate to media companies to support independent journalism? 
Think of what happened to the COVID-19 vaccine developed by the University of Oxford. Researchers originally planned to release their vaccine patent for free so that third world countries could manufacture their doses faster instead of waiting for the rich countries to donate the vaccines to them. Until Bill Gates stepped in and forced the university to partner with a manufacturer and not release their patents against the pleas of the WHO and the developing world that patents would stifle vaccine access, Gates used his $750 million leverage to change a university's course. That was one of the most evil things that a person, like a singular individual, can do. Okay? One of the most evil things. And he didn't even do it for profit for the vaccine or anything like that. He did it for the love of the game. Understand one thing, okay? That's what makes it even worse because he wasn't directly supposed to profit from that. What he profits from is patents. If we make an argument that international collaboration and the, uh, uh, the abolition of patents is objectively good, that it's inherently a, a utilitarian act of kindness, then all of a sudden, people could ask the same thing about Microsoft, and that will make Bill Gates pee-pee Microsoft instead of patents uh, remaining in the way that they are, intellectual property remaining the way it is, making Bill Gates pee-pee macro hard, okay? That's it. That's why he did that shit. That's what makes it so much worse. That, like, like he wasn't even directly profiting from that shit. That's why so many fucking, uh, like, there were, there were articles written at the time uh, uh, about like how we shouldn't abolish the uh, you know patents for for vaccines internationally because like people could steal from the research and it's like steal from the research. The fuck do you mean, brother? Steal from what? Re You're talking about cancer research. You know what I mean? Oh well, uh, actually, the the delivery mechanism for the mRNA v vaccines are are uh, going to be really good in like uh, cancer treatment in the future. It's like you want to paywall medicine. You're crazy. You're a bad guy. You're a fucking bad guy. I think the argument was about quality control. Yeah, no, that's the PR argument, okay? It was not about quality control. How fucking disingenuous was that, by the way? I don't even fault you for falling for that, okay? Uh, well, you said it was stupid, but that's what they said. They said, oh, India can't produce these vaccines on their own. We need to make sure that there's quality control. Motherfucker, India produced... 75% of all vaccines distributed globally, dude. Get the fuck out of here with this quality control bullshit. Not saying that to the chatter. I'm saying that to Bill Gates. It was a disingenuous and, dare I say, fucking racist argument, okay? Bill Gates is not connected to effective altruism. He criticized effective altruism promotes rising taxes. Uh, Rucker Bregman said that. Okay, I don't care if Bill Gates is personally connected to effective altruism or not. He's still a fucking demon. What do you mean? We're literally talking about how he's a demon right here. He doesn't have to be. Every one of them can have their own seasoning of ethics, okay? It's still inherently unethical. I'm actually happy that that chatter brought up uh, quality control. I fucking railed into Billy, Billy Bob so much back then. I totally fucking forgot about the dumbass arguments that he put forward. Oh, my Lord. He did this to protect the interests of big pharmaceutical companies he has been investing in for decades. I don't even think it was because of that, by the way. I think it's more nefarious than that. There was a reason why companies and, and uh, billionaires that would benefit from mass vaccination, mass inoculation campaigns so they can get everyone in the workforce back to work immediately literally still stood in front of international IPs, intellectual property rights being waived for this fucking vaccine. Why? Because... They themselves benefit from intellectual property rights. They themselves benefit from patents. That's why. Their 
mode of revenue uh, generation revolves around the protection and maintenance of patents. If they were to abolish that, if they were to blow that shit up, if people were to even say, wait a minute, why don't we have, we are witnessing Hassan's anti-vaxxer character arc live? What? Bro, did you not just not understand? It's the opposite. I'm saying I want everyone to be inoculated. I want mass vaccines to be distributed to people. Standing in front of that and stopping that from happening only because your profit margins might be in the future diminished as a consequence of like people making an argument to abolish IP for other sectors is the exact opposite of what you think I'm saying. I'm saying vaccine good. I'm saying IP bad, vaccine good. Breaking the patent opens a precedent. Same idea with the moral hazard argument. Yep. I think personally it is mind-boggling that we have paywalled healthcare. Like even in medicine, it is so crazy. Making medicine is expensive though. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Shouldn't be as expensive as it is, but it, as it is, but how can we do that when the workforce is saddled with debt and billionaires are so invested? What the fuck do you mean making medicine is expensive? No the fuck, it's not. It's not. What are you talking about? It, it is not. It is not expensive at all. Look at what happens to medication when generics can be made. When, when the patent has uh, lived out its entire lifetime and then all of a sudden it's cheap. How the fuck did that happen? Wait a minute. I don't understand. No, making medication is really expensive. ROI on free medicine is crazy. In insulin company is going to be go, go, going to go bankrupt. I want them to. He meant making the research, not manufacturing medicine. Yeah. Wait till you find out how medicine is researched. <laughs> wait till you find out what corporate private corporations do. Once they fucking sit on an IP, once they sit on a patent to medication. Novel chemical compounds are found in higher frequency under publicly funded medical research than privately funded medical research. Even if it's founded under uh, privately funded facilities, those facilities are still also operating under the same fucking guidelines that publicly funded research facilities are, being, uh, are operating under. Okay? Novel chemical compounds are still founded. They're still found, not founded, sorry, in publicly funded facilities at a higher rate. Do not forget this. The overwhelming majority of funds that private facilities, or not private facilities, but like pharmaceutical companies, utilize most of their funds not on novel chemical compound development, but instead on marketing or distribution mechanisms. What does that mean? Oh, well, we switched a, a, a little different part of this fucking drug that you were using, okay, which means now we have to extend the patent. We have to extend the patent for another seven fucking years. That's it. That's all they do. Huh. Which resulted in the global vaccine apartheid and possibly millions of preventable deaths. Money buys influence. It buys it in politics. It buys it in science. It gets you favorable coverage in the media. Gates poured $300 million into Oh, come on, bro. He put fucking mint press in here. You motherfucker said he's a libertarian or whatever, but like, that's mint press, dude. Are you kidding me? That's Alan. Gates poured...
He put a fucking Alan MacLeod article on here. There's no shot that this dude is not a leftist. Are you kidding me? That, that, what the fuck? Poured $300 million into media companies, Kurtzizak being one of them. Ask yourself, Mick when was Cloud. the last time you read a critical piece on Gates or his foundation? I don't know how to say his last if name, Kurtzizak shut up. wants to maintain they are able to decouple the interests of their funding source from the content in their videos, does this mean that we'll soon get to see a cutely animated character of Bill Gates meeting up with Jeffrey Epstein at his private venues after he was convicted sex trafficker? Science is more than a body of knowledge. When big money buys big influence, science is always the casualty. If we are not able to ask skeptical questions, to interrogate those who tell us that something is true, to be skeptical of uh, in authority, it becomes less diverse, more stringent, and more authoritative. Then we're up for grabs for the next charlatan, political or religious who comes ambling along. In the academic community, there is a phenomenon called the chilling effect. It occurs when scientists self-censor or refuse to speak out against the funding source of their institutions out of fear of losing support or getting sacked. With the Gates Foundation, they refer to it as the bill chill. Gates funding priorities have worried scientists for stifling diversity of views for decades. His philanthropic funding made it difficult to find independent reviewers. Through his multi-billion dollar empire of donations and investments, Gates amassed enough power to single-handedly influence policies of global and national governing bodies. When Gates Foundation pours money into a project, they end up having enough power to veto public policies that don't align with their charity's priorities. We need to have a serious debate. Is big money lobbying a problem only if it's for issues we don't like? Or is it a problem on principle? This is how Kurt Gazette views the fossil fuel lobbyists, as evil villains trying to influence our politicians and mislead the public with their money. Kurtzizak clearly understands the problem of big money, but they don't seem to have a problem with when they are on the receiving end of the big money influencing policies and public opinion. Billionaires have hacked the system by which we measure the merits of arguments. Hassan, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Why don't you just give up? Like, I get you want to make more people leftists, but what's the point? The oligarchs already have a system basically fucked. Like, what the fuck's the point in educating people when there's no revolutionary potential anymore? That's dumb. That's silly. That's stupid. Okay? Don't be a fucking doomer. Society can only prosper when old men plant seeds for trees they will never sit in the shade of. Okay? Come on. Come on doesn't matter. You might not see positive change in your lifetime. You might not see positive change in your children's lifetime, but ultimately you're doing the right thing because your cause is just and you believe that you are setting a better future for the next generation and the generation after that. Okay? That's crazy. What if we don't even get to the next generation? You don't know that. Someday you'll get that quote right, but close. I think I, I paraphrase it, but I think I do a decent job of paraphrasing it. So fuck you. Okay. Nereye lan? Ay amına koyayım. Geldin yemeği yedin. Siktirin gittin ha? Hadi eyvallah. Anyway. It does not matter. It's easy to feel doomer. It's easy to feel nihilistic. It's feel. It's easy to feel pessimistic. It's easy to feel like, you know, the world's never going to get better. <clears throat> but you do the right thing, and you will get a lot of emotional fulfillment out of that anyway. Because you're not doing it because you're going to have immediate tangible results. There might be things that you do, short-term goals that you achieve, that might actually... Uh, uh, make you feel better, okay? You might actually get producible, easily definable uh, short-term results. Like, let's say you uh, organize your workplace. That's an that's a example I can use, right? You can get some tangible results in your community. But ultimately, even if you don't get that, the reason why you're pushing for this is because your cause is just... 
is because you are doing the right thing and it makes you feel good. That's it. It's in science and public discourse. With the sheer wealth, they brute force their ideas into the mainstream by giving their interests more funding for research, more coverage in the media, and higher likelihood of becoming a public policy. This system is beyond broken, especially for a studio as big as Kurtz's act. Back in 2017... Oh, the other, the last thing I was going to say is, and I don't want to fuck this up, there are decades where nothing happens, and then there are weeks where decades happen. Rare Hassan lying. Dude, that's inspiring and sad. I'm rock solid in my political position. Don't get me wrong, but it is sad. It doesn't matter. You don't know. You don't know what happens. You don't know. Curtis Act admitted in their Medium article they would actually be able to do away with sponsors altogether and rely on their Patreon supporters, ad revenue, and merch. They also have a design studio branch that makes commission work for big name clients. So why haven't the channel got rid of sponsors yet? They are already funded by the German state and they sold courses on Brilliant and Skillshare. Why not maintain integrity? You can afford to make less, make less. By the very least, Kurtzizat should be more transparent and disclose sponsorship at the beginning of their videos so that people can make the decision before they watch the video and not afterwards. But transparency alone would not fix the conflict of interest and perverse incentives. Journalists, educators, oh. and media outlets should not take money from entities they are supposed to be critically covered. Damn, why'd he put... Damn, why'd he put our boy there, dude? World Economic Forum's very own bravest warrior, the Fedayeen himself, dude. The Fedayeen, dog. Johnny motherfucking Harris right there, dude. What? <laughs> Agent Johnny. Okay, I joke. I don't know if he's CIA or not. I know he did a I know he did a response to me uh uh titling my YouTube video is Johnny Harris CIA. Okay. Like I don't know. I don't know if he's CIA. I I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. He made a video on you. Ha ha ha. Who? Johnny? Friend of the show, Johnny, did not make a video on me. He just made a short, like, response, like a YouTube short. I don't think priming audiences with information before giving them info to be objective about is intentionally disingenuous or outright dumb. Yeah, he did this. This was... I mean, he's he's playing along with it. He's not like, what the fuck? Oops, sorry, Johnny. We got to get you into witness protection. Whoa, wait a minute. C Max says, "I still like Johnny. Don't care what anyone says. Yeah, because you're Belgian." It's an entire, it's an entire fake nation of of uh, like literally loving the CIA, designed around loving the CIA and and international, uh, Western, uh, hegemonic superpowers congregate literally in the fake nation of Belgium, not even a real country. There's a border for Germany to enter France. Here was Hank responding to the Krugerzaks. I think Philip's response on Reddit was really good, better than mine. Would have been if a person put together a manipulative hit piece that made my company look shitty and went viral. Yeah, it's Hank Green. Like, yeah, wow. You mean to tell me Hank Green is upset that someone criticized... Like, Hank Green is a liberal. He is the best liberal. He's the best boy, okay? But he is the liberal. Like... Of course he's going to say this is fucked up uh, that they did this. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um. Anyway, uh, okay, so... Kurs Kurs Gesagt, a uh, statement on the conflict of interest allegations. Posting statement on behalf of Philip, our founder, head writer, who has read it blocked on his devices. Understand. Okay, that's the best thing that you could ever do. 
In December, a video came out. We reacted to it as we were planning to finally finish our next behind the scenes video anyways, explain how we do business, how we see it. We're a big platform. It's okay to criticize. We welcome it. Although ideally, with better research and not out of context in a scandalizing way. Kirk's Eyes is billionaire funded, not viewer funded. Our viewers provide 65% of our income via our shop, YouTube ad revenue, and Patreon in that order. Damn, their shop makes the most. Um, institutional sponsorship and grants, licensing and agency make up the remaining 11%. Jesus fuck, that's a lot of money. Holy shit. I mean, it's TLDR not true. I mean, it is billionaire funded. There's still a fuckload of funding from billionaires, but also on top of that, fuckload of funding early on from billionaires when it mattered a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're massive. They're, they're literally massive. So that makes sense. I don't think this, I don't think, uh, this dude, the hated one was saying all of their videos are funded by billionaires. He was saying that some of their videos are funded directly by billionaires and in a lot of instances, uh, those, those videos happen to align with the values of the billionaires themselves. Now, you might have authentically arrived at those values, right? But ultimately, you know, it just happens to be aligned with those values. Wasn't another point that the sources are billionaire funded? Yes. Long version, sums are huge, so add a bit of context. How do we fundamentally finance ourselves? So we added the last three years, which should give you a fair and current insight. There are two main sources of revenue, viewers and outside funders during this time. Blah, 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 blah. We got about 6% of German public broadcast from the German channel during that time. We ended this partnership by the end of 2022. Organizational sponsors represent about 13%. Rest of small agency work. Stems from open philanthropy and is not used for any sponsored videos, but for translating our videos and creating our videos with TikTok. With these funds, we have started Arabic, Hindi, Korean, Japanese, Portuguese, and French channels. It's just too expensive to do on our own. The goal was that these channels become self-sustaining. Uh, there's a two-year funding for TikTok content. It gives us great freedom to explore how to use this platform. Okay, okay. Grant includes only two sponsored videos so far. So really, only 4% of our video in the last three years uh, came from sponsored organizations. Only 0 0.9 from Gates. It's plausible that we are completely disregarding all of our values for that little of our income, even if you think we could be influenced by the right place, price. Okay, I think this... Okay. Here's what I think. Are you ready for this? Manufacturing consent in mainstream media, in legacy publishers, does not occur oftentimes through direct remuneration, okay? It's not like, I am billionaire guy, here is $100 million, say nice things to me. Just like the people that get elevated to Don Lamon or Anderson Cooper's positions within the structure of CNN or within the structure of MSNBC or within the structure of uh, Fox News, are not getting there because they're like, I will be your best lapdog, okay? It's implied. It is almost self-selecting, and when it's not self-selecting, they push you out, okay? Because the entire purpose, if you've read Manufacturing Consent, the entire purpose of the media is to disseminate this level of propaganda, okay? So Kurgazox, as I also called from the jump, before the video even started, is operating in a, in a similar vein. Okay? Like what Chomsky told that journalist, you made it to that point because you hold these views. Exactly. There is a reason why Bill Gates is not giving me money ostensibly we're on the same side as it pertains to climate change. You know what I mean? There's a reason why George Soros is not giving me money. I'm an independent media outlet. Why am I not getting money from these motherfuckers? I thought we were on the same side. Are we not? We hate climate change. We love uh, open borders, right? So what's up? Why am I not getting that money? You're a tiny bug in the vast world? Sure. 
But I think at this point, being one of the leftist, like largest leftist media outlets independently, if these guys were such, uh, you know, uh, brilliant supporters of the left as the right claim that they are, or as even a lot of liberals think that they are, then what's up? Where's my fucking check, dog? Yeah, and, and when Kurgesagt started, they were not the powerhouse that they are right now. But they were still getting funded. You get it? <sighs> yeah, smaller podcasters get their money. You don't have to be that big to be a right-wing guy that gets money from, you know, oil and, the oil and gas industry. What, you think people are genuinely paying $300,000 in speaker's fees to Ben Shapiro because they really want to hear what he has to say? Who's funding the $300,000 speaker's fees for Ben Shapiro? How did that work? Let's continue. This is why the right is the most altruistic since they find the dipshit with 20K followers. Bill Gates needs to step up his astroturfing game. I mean, yeah. Like. Like, Jeffrey Epstein gave $64,000 never forget this to some fucking random psychopathic raced realist youtuber by the name of jf Gareppi. he's like a straight up nazi okay how the fuck did that guy get sixty four thousand dollars from jeffrey epstein none of you even know who the fuck this guy is and if you know who he is you're probably brain broken, and that's a bit of a self-report for you to know some fucking super in-the-margins pedophile Nazi. He got $64,000 from Jeffrey Epstein. How? Why? Because when you're saying things that they like, they want you to keep saying it. They'll give you money. It's the same principle of what you do in the middle of the hour, at the top of the hour, when you gift a $5 subscription to someone else or subscribe on your own, but done in a way that is, of course, infinitely more powerful because one billionaire has, you know, uh, more purchasing power than all of you combined. Okay? By the way, that's a secret middle of the hour segue, but, but that's it. Say things they like and have an audience. You're doing their work for them. Exactly. Which is why it's always laughable when I see like neoliberal uh, weirdos online. And they're doing it for free. Or they're doing it in my chat. And it's like, why are you doing it for free, idiot? You're so dumb. Anyway, in an article I wrote in 2017, I explained uh, how we handled the aura. There's been criticism. We haven't mentioned these partnerships prominently enough. Not something we really heard a lot about in the last few years, but we will talk internally about how we can make this clear. Acquisition 2, Kurzgesagt is working in an unscientific way that uses sources that are also funded by the grant givers. We don't work unscientifically, but diligently fact check our videos ourselves and work with scientists from around the world. Long version, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um... Yeah, I don't think it's as disingenuous as the way that this video was framed. Uh, and I don't think that this reaction to it or response to it actually undermines the overarching message that uh that like they got a lot of uh they got a lot of capital early on and that uh part of the reason why they get that capital is because 
they have united values with the uh with the with the billionaires that are giving them money. Um Thank you very much for your response. I wasn't expecting considering it's been a lot more than a month. Since, uh, it's been about more than a month since my video was published. I would love to be a part of this larger conversation. On to the official response. The funding of Kruger's Eyes videos, working with scientific scientists that financially connect to your response. However, there's a range of key points you miss out on, and they are even more important than just two of their own. Namely, you don't address criticism of Kruger. Kurtz Gazak sponsor disclaimers and the suggestion they should come at the beginning of the videos and not in the outro or the description as you disclaim currently. Criticism that uh, they're not transparent enough about revealing your connections between the source and the scientists that consult with uh, Kurtz Gazak sponsors. Criticism that uh, Kurtz Gazak or any other informative outlet should not be receiving funds from entities that have a financial agenda, profitable or charitable, in the areas you cover in your videos. Criticism that Philip Detmer told his viewers uh, through Reddit comments that Kurz Gazak does not let sponsors comment on your scripts, but there are several instances where sponsors had input on your scripts in certain, uh, certain videos. Criticism that uh, Kurz Gazak relied on a sponsor back commercial entity for a major citation on uh, Kurz Gazak's source of document and a video on climate change. Criticism that portrays topics that align with their sponsor's interests through the lens that benefits the sponsor's views and interests. On funding. You claim 65 is from your viewers. There are several major issues with that statement I think require further clarification. First, you chose a period of three years, 2020 to 2022. Why are you limiting your numbers to the just the last three years? My video evaluates your estimated revenue streams from the moment Kurgazak's uh, incorporation in Germany till about the fall of 2022 when my video was finalized. Comparing numbers from just the last three years of that evaluation of a seven-year estimate is not a fair comparison. The historical context matters. Because in your response, you are a large animation studio with 60 employees. But back when you were awarded grants from the Gates Foundation, Open Society, and Templeton, you went from just five employees to less than half of what your workforce is today, or even at the time my video was released. That is precisely what I was saying as well. They, like, they literally just avoided that. They avoided that super fucking hard. That is, I think, a fundamental point that was not addressed in their response originally. And I, don't, I, I, I think it's a little, it's a little weird. You can still like their videos, by the way. Chat, never forget. I'm not saying stop watching these guys. They're bad. They're unethical, okay? They, they're they probably even genuine in their opinions that they're presenting. I'm not shitting on uh, 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 Kurs Gesagt, okay? I'm not. Achtung! Alarm! I'm not shitting on them. I'm not saying Scheiße. Don't watch them, okay? But even in the past, when I watched a lot of their videos, especially when I found out that they were also being funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, before I found out that they were funded uh, by the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation, okay, even I thought that they were a little sussy. If you recall, especially when we talk about climate change uh, uh, and, and solutions to climate change and, uh, you know, uh, carbon emissions uh, and how much of that is coming from developed nations. Literally just watching the same way you would watch Johnny Harris, they're done. Exactly. I love watching Johnny Harris videos. I think he makes great videos. Okay? He makes great videos. You're a white pig, says Puerto Rican vegan socialist. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I'm not going to ban him. I think it's funny. Um, I'm sorry, but they're dog shit. They literally put out a video on why nuclear annihilation is good. Okay. Yeah. Then you don't like that video. But there are plenty of videos that they make that are cool and fun. And, uh, you know, I like them. Just remember where their biases may lay. That's it. That's it. 
That's all I'm stating. That's all I'm saying. That's all I am mentioning. You are Gulen's puppet. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, according to your company documents in Germany, uh, there were 10 employees in 2016, 14 in 2017, 22 in 2018, 30 in 2019, 37 in 2020. Also in your 2017 medium article on Kur uh, Gazak dealing with sponsors, you admit that Bill and Melinda Gates was your biggest supporter. Most importantly, my argument wasn't that Kurus Gazak is a billionaire funded and not viewer funded, as you stated in your response. In a re response to another critical video, you commented that Kurus Gazak is an almost entirely viewer funded channel. What my video is arguing against is your statement that it's an almost entirely viewer funded. And what my evaluation showed, and what you also seem to admit, is that you did indeed receive more funding from billionaire entities than your Patreon supporters. Admittedly, Patreon funding is not the only revenue stream that can be considered as coming from your viewers. So let's take a look at your claim in more detail. Okay, I don't really care about the breakdown of this. I think that's nerd shit. Sorry. Okay. Um, blah, 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 YouTube. Uh, it's like semantic shit. Okay, I'm not reading all of that. Uh, to support the creation of videos on topics relevant to effective altruism and improving humanity's long-run future, in addition to video creation... Kurus Gazakt intends to use his funding to translate existing videos into a number of non-English languages to support the production of short-form video content for platforms like TikTok and YouTube. Some of this content will feature topics relevant to the effect of altruism and improving humanity's long-run future. Both of these grants fund video production, and only one grant also dedicates a portion of the total sum to translation. So by the very least, more than half of the $6 million grant from Open Philanthropy has been dedicated to make more videos. Whether it's shorts on YouTube or TikTok, they are still videos. Holy shit, that is blistering. He cooked... And now we're eating, okay? That's a scathing accusation that I think is very clever. I think that is a, a good gotcha. I, I will say that. Very good gotcha. I assume good faith on your part here and guess that this is a semantics distinction without difference. You claim only two videos were sponsored by this grant, but the grant funds a lot more videos or shorts than that. So to dismiss the open philanthropy grant would be disingenuous. After this, you go on to explain how none of this funding is significant enough to influence your values. This is a preposterous statement. And if anyone tried to accuse you of that, they would have to provide extraordinary evidence that is unlikely to even exist, which is why I've never made that claim in my videos or anywhere else. I, I think Kurus Gazakt perfectly aligns with the values of their sponsors. Yep. That's it. That does not make it immune to influence. It arguably makes it even worse. It is because of your values that you receive all the significant funding. The problem is that any channel that would try to go against your values would not receive such funding and would not have enough resource to compete with you. Like, I don't think Climate Town gets this shit. You know what I mean? Fox News, for instance, was created as a part of News Corp by conservative billionaire Rupert Murdoch to make content that appeals to conservative viewers. No liberal journalists were paid to suddenly regurgitate conservative talking points. Conservative journalists and news anchors were paid to do that. That doesn't make it magically not a problem anymore. It is still problematic because it amplifies specific views on national television that are not proportionally reflected in the true demographics or don't stand on the merit or arguments. The problem with billionaire funding is that they get to amplify their own ideas irrespective of their merit simply because they can dump money into media companies that make content about it. My critique is that this is how billionaires fund influence, not that they make people say something they don't believe in. Yeah, this is great. I mean, yeah, this is a, a, a way better summarization of, of basically what I was stating uh, when I was talking about a, uh, an apt comparison uh, of how apt of a comparison this is to legacy media and how billionaires fund or influence or at least benefit from uh, the kinds of propaganda that you hear from legacy media. Now, there are, of course, moments when you recognize that inherent contradiction of what you're hearing from ostensibly liberal uh, media uh, operatives, right? Where someone turns around and says something like, uh, well, you know, healthcare would actually be bad on CNN. And you're like, hold up, what? Like, what do, what do you mean? Or uh, they won't do it in such, uh, you know, flagrant ways. But in many instances, they'll just, they'll just like vilify those who are advocating for it. You know what I mean? They'll lend credence to the, to the ridiculous, cynical criticisms of those who advocate for it, right? Like just a little bit of coverage on, uh, you know, um, maybe Bernie Sanders has three houses and that's not great. Even something as innocuous as that could be an effective way to destroy uh, the, the, the people that are advocating for certain values that go against 
the uh, corporate benefactor's uh, best interests, right? Just do that, you know? It happens all the time. Ugh. So, you know, just remember that. People want to consume content uncritically so they think they should stop watching shit they don't 100% agree with. That's okay for reality TV, maybe not for politics. No, I mean, always, criti always consume content critically, but also don't fucking uh, try to stop people from watching shit because you don't know why people are watching certain things. Feel me? Um, brother, you're so right about transphobia being a mental illness. Lama Fao, I can't believe it. Oh, not only this, but actually, here's a great, here's another great example, right? Transphobic sentiment is really good for New York Times and other legacy media publications. Why? Because transphobia, uh, transphobia is a pretty, it's a normative position for the most part. A lot of people either have apathy or directly have disdain for trans people, right? So when you drop that in, when you like, Talk about it a little bit by lending credence to, for example, detransitioners, which are so incredibly fucking marginal, right? That like the amount of coverage that has been dedicated to them almost is uh, akin or identical to the actual number of detransitioners that exist in society, right? It's like the amount of articles that they've written uh, is, is more than the amount of detransitioners that even fucking exist, okay? not a real thing it's not a real issue but oh we got to lend credence to these guys we got to always talk about them we got to always talk about all three of the detransitioners non-stop right you would never do that for vaccine skepticism as i talked about before when we were criticizing the new york times for its transphobia you would never do that because vaccine skeptics are outside of the scientific consensus and the new york times understands that lending credence to Vaccine skeptics m creates the presence of this false balance. As though, like, the other side has some good ideas, too. We got to hear them out. You get it? Sorry for making fun of your race. Many of, your, uh, many of my friends are white. Just don't like the burp. Love you, brother. <laughs> You're so fucking stupid, dude. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> he says, sorry for making fun of your race. I agree with you. Marginalized groups of people should be 